our dear viewers and listeners. Greetings to you in the precious and wonderful name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Like we always say, today is the day. The Lord has made. And we shall rejoice and be glad in it. We thank the Lord for this moment. And as we begin to dive into the word. On this wonderful journey. As we look at this book of Revelation. I would want us to dedicate this moment. To God in prayer. Let's pray. Loving Father we thank you for your grace. For your love for your mercy yes, and for your enduring grace. Yes, we are here for you, King of glory. Mm. Walk in us, speak through us, mm. amplify your word. Yes, Let everyone that hears it receive mm. it with meekness, with joy, with gladness. Yes, Let it produce after its own kind, King of glory, yes, that we might come back to the kingdom to fulfill your plans and purposes yes, as you prepared heaven the Father. Yes, we thank you, King of glory, yes, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. We will be taking our text today from the book of Revelation, chapter 18, from verse 1 to verse 24. The Bible says, After these things, I saw another angel coming down from heaven having great authority. And the earth was illuminated with his glory. And he cried mightily with a loud voice saying, Babylon the great is fallen. Babylon is fallen and has become a dwelling place of demons, a prison for every foul spirit, and a cage for every unclean and hated bird. For all the nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. The kings of the earth have committed fornication with her. The merchants of the earth have become rich through the abundance of her luxury. And I heard another angel from heaven saying, Come out of her, my, my people, lest you share in her sins, and lest you receive of her plagues. For her sins have reached to heaven. And God has remembered her iniquities. Render to her just as she rendered to you. And repay her double according to her works. In the cup which she has mixed, mix double for her. In the measure that she glorified herself and lived luxuriously, in the same measure give her torment and sorrow. For she says in her heart, I sit as queen. I'm no widow. And will not see sorrow. Therefore, her plagues will come. In one day, death and mourning and famine. And she will be utterly burned with fire. For strong is the Lord God who judges her. The kings of the earth who committed fornication and lived luxuriously with her will weep and lament for her. When they see the smoke of her burning, 
Bamukabi didenga bala bomuka guoko chebwa kwe. Standing at a distance for fear of her torment saying. Ngabaye milida walo okuono okutulu okutu, okutu, gunjizba kwa itamu bo gedenti. Alas alas that great city Babylon that mighty city. Chanaku echibu gechidene echecha Babyloni. For in one hour your judgment has come. And the merchants of the earth will weep and mourn over her. For no one buys their merchandise anymore. Merchandise of gold and silver. Precious stones and pearls. Fine linen and purple. Silk and scarlet. Every kind of citron wood. Every kind of object of ivory. Every kind of object of most precious wood. Bronze, iron and marble. And cinnamon and incense. Fragrant oil and frankincense. Wine and oil. Fine flour and wheat. Cattle and sheep. Horses and chariots. And bodies and souls of men. The fruit of your soul longed for has gone from you. And all the things which are rich and splendid have gone from you. And you shall find them no more at all. The merchants of these things who became rich by her we stand at a distance for fear of her torment, weeping. And wailing. And saying, alas, alas. That great city which was clothed in fine linen. Purple and scarlet. And adorned with gold and precious stones and pearls. For in one hour. Such great riches came to nothing. Every ship master. All who travel by ship. Sailors and as many as, as trade on the sea. Stood at a distance. And cried out when they saw the smoke of her burning saying. What is like this great city? They threw dust on their heads and cried out. Weeping and wailing. And saying, alas, alas, that great city. In which all who had Ships on the sea became rich by her wealth. For in one hour she is made desolate. Rejoice over her, O heaven. And your holy apostles and prophets for God has avenged you on her. Then a mighty angel took up a stone like a great millstone and threw it into the sea. Saying, Thus with violence the great city Babylon shall be thrown down. And shall be found no more. The sound of harpists, musicians, flutists, trumpeters shall not be heard in you anymore. 
Nedobo zidi haba kubibena anga e vivuga ne mirele na haba fuwa makondele tebali uliruwa na te. No craftman of any craft shall be found in you anymore. Ne wanku badomu gezi no muji ya webi intubyo na. And the sound of millstone shall not be heard in you anymore. Nedobo zeli olube ngo teri uliruwa na te mugwe. The light of of a lamb shall not shine in you anymore. Netabaza yoku tangala, teri damu kwa kida mugwe. And the voice of bridegroom and bride shall not be heard in you anymore. Netdobo zidi omu golo omu kazi, no omu saja, teri uliwa mumwe na te. For your merchants were the great men of the earth. Wanga abatunzi wa mwebebali abalangida bensi. For by your sorcery all the nations were deceived. Tiro kuita mubulogobo ama wanga and in her was found the blood of prophets and saints. And all who were slain on the earth. Blessed be the word of God. We have a very interesting story today concerning the fall of the great city of Babylon. Over the last two sessions, we identified who Babylon was. And today we look at her fall, which has two aspects. The religious aspect, as well as the commercial political aspect. You see, to put it for you in perspective, today we are living at a time where even in church, even in the preaching of the gospel, you often hear people trying to devise ways to make life more comfortable. Every one of us wants it more comfortable. We want to receive whatever we want to receive faster. And we want to, to deliver whatever we want to deliver in the best of ambience. So when it comes to the matters of the faith, often we want to go with what appears to be trending with the time. And often I hear a lot of preachers trying to take this timeless message of the gospel. And in an effort to package it in ways that may be acceptable to the people, they are moving on very dangerous territory. Because in an attempt to package it, if we are not careful, we are moving to a comfortable territory of idolatry. You see, today, we live in a world where there is constant struggle between good and evil. And this is brought about because evil wants to disrupt the agenda of God. And the devil uses an array of strategies to be able to achieve this objective. And it may include unbelief. We meet a lot of people today who walk about in unbelief. They don't believe the existence of God. They don't. So when you ask them, okay, so what happens after this life? And they have no answer to those questions. He uses temptation. Deception. Fear. Religion. Religion. Persecution. 
okutulugunya and the list goes on and on bingi nyo now though this battle may be invisible ya dengo lutao no tetulaba na masa gomu bili it is actually real na yinga wiru lilu genda masa and souls of men and women are at stake here kati emyo yo java antu jebaluwa nida so when somebody surrenders their life to jesus christ oye na wawayo vlamu wedi yesu christo you enlist as a soldier in the army So the fact is this war was going on. So when you give your life to Christ, you have only switched sides. And have now trusted him as your savior and lord. So back to the strategy of the enemy. His strategy encompasses a broader scope than what people can imagine. He attacks individuals. He attacks communities. Nations. He goes on to a global scale. Using leaders to be able to influence and ensure that his agenda is put on the table by sewo enteka teka ye mu bantu so for example fune cho kulabira ko he may use tolerance kaenzo kuisa o ogumikirize ebintu where by people in an attempt to accommodate others bwenga mugeza ko gumikiriza no kukiriza abantu abasuka ko ebyo byokiriza in order to accommodate a culture or a school of thought or a religious perspective or a certain behavior they, before they know it they are got into and are now accepting whatever is coming their way so in consenting to accommodate behind the shadows is the enemy trying to influence kati gwo byaniriza no bikiriza chota labeli emabega anti omulabe yageza ko kusobuze sokirize ero yanirize ebintu bino how does he do that achikola by taking advantage of our egos akoze so mwaganyo gwamalala go by taking advantage of our narrow view nendo woza ya fenfunda to be able to get us to be puffed up kata eitiro mo otu otu and soon we think we are in control everybody is happy so since everybody is happy then there is no problem whatsoever kati tiwali buzibuli omuchi musanyu sisa and that is where we are most vulnerable kata wetu vera mu bulabo obusinga yu that is where we are without hope awo tubate tucha ina subi because we have divorced from god ordained strategy kubanga twau kanye okuva mu ndowoza nete kateka ya katonda the objective of the enemy ekigendwa cho mulabi is to get us to be me focused instead of being god focused so when our sight or our focus is not god centered and is focused on me that is the moment when we are weakest so in our attempt in the previous sessions to unveil the beast and then previously to uh, to unveil this woman who will be ushered into preeminence by the beast is to help us understand this strategy and how does he get all this to work he uses one word materialism Now having material stuff is not bad in a way. 
Okubera omugaga nevi ntubi inji si chibi. But you have to understand something. Newe na cho ino kutegera. Concerning materialism. Ichi kuwa ataka na kubiyo omugaga kwa gale vio omugaga. Jesus in Matthew chapter 6. Matayo omugaga yesu ayogira. And verse 24. Matayo omugaga habini mudia. Refers to materialism as mammon. Ayogira kukwe gombe vio omugaga nyo ngo kuwele za mammon. Now mammon was the god of Carthage. He was considered the god of wealth. And Jesus says in this text that you cannot worship both God and mammon. Now this is an intriguing statement. Why, why would Jesus compare mammon and God? Because it is because materialism has all the characteristics of a god. Number one, it offers security. It provides number two a sense of freedom. It provides number three a sense of power. Number four, it gives you the ability to influence. Number five, it gives you status in society. Number six, it gives you the prestige. So it is capable of inspiring devotion. Wealthy people are given all sorts of titles. They, they receive all kinds of names. They tend to be accommodated. But this has a single minded preoccupation. It is driving the person to idolatry. So now as having seen the destruction of the fourth religious system previously in chapter 17. Now we turn to our attention to the other bit, which is the political and economic side. And it is here that we encounter seven voices in these 24 verses that call out the fall of the great Babylon. Seven voices coming through the pages of scripture all pointing to the fall of Babylon. The first voice is what we, we see from verse 1 to verse 3. And it is the cry of the angel. So it is the voice of condemnation. So the angel cries out on the condemnation of Babylon. He cries out to the fact that Babylon will fall. And that the end of it will be destruction. But I want you to observe the tense that he uses. He does not say Babylon will fall. He says Babylon has fallen. Proving to us or providing to us the certainty that Babylon will be distracted. It implies that this future event is certain to occur. Now the second voice that we see is found between verse 4 and verse 8. This is the call to separation. The angel calls for the people 
who did not participate in the sins of great Babylon to get out of her. It is a call to ensure that you are not a partaker of this that is going to come to Babylon. Even in the same way today, we are called out to be separated from sin. Why? Because sin is destructive. Sin always involves consequences. Even though we may deny them, even though they may not occur instantly. When you sin, it is like planting a seed. When you plant a seed today, you don't harvest today. So for some people, because the harvest is not immediate, we take it to think that God has forgotten. But every period of sowing does have a harvest. So it is with the same way with sin. God will punish every sin that is not repented. The third voice that we see is found from verse 9 to verse 10. This is the lament of King the men and women who were in authority at the time the Bible says they will cry out politicians will grieve they will recognize now that Babylon was in opposition to God and they themselves have now been married to this harlot. So they are one body now. The Paul tells us that whoever is joined with the harlot becomes one body. The spiritual sense here applies that when they are joined to with this harlot, they have become one body. From the spiritual angle, when the wrath of God is poured out on Babylon, the body of Babylon becomes an object of the wrath of God. So the Bible tells us that they will watch in shock and they will grieve. They can't believe what is happening. That what they thought was the worship of God has turned out to be idolatry. We have the fourth cry that we see from verse 11 to verse 17. This takes the biggest chunk of the text. Why? Because it is the cry of the merchants. The people who profited from the system. To them, it looked like there was no end to all the joy that was coming their way. The glory and the happiness and the splendor in which they, they birthed. When it looked like this would never end, the Bible says people who became wealthy will mourn. The merchants who profited from this satanic economic system. They will understand that whatever we see is temporal. Human ability 
Obusobozi bwaba so brilliant wadenga bulabikango bwama has a limit nebulike komo that all that is around us yo nebitwe toludi does have a cell by date biriko akasera we bijyo kuvunda they will not last forever tebibelera mirembe then verse 17 to verse 20 at bongiri wa 10 namusamvu pakabiri the bible gives us the fifth cry bible ye tulage doboze lyo kutano this is the cry from the mariners we bunu abakolere byawe ku nyanja from the sailors of the time ukuva kubatambuzi benyanja we looked at the transactors who are the merchants wala baba tu now we look at the people who transported this round katibano abatambuza ebyamaguzi everyone who was part of the system we search no me ari ekitundu ku nkole iyo or if everyone who will be part of the system obaka tugambe yenali etaba mu nkole iyo will have a reaction na ye kijja mukomako the bible tells us bible yekakasa that these also never know will mourn nabo bajakungu bako they will cry when they reflect on the wealth that they shipped bajaka banga bajukira ebyo bugagga bibafuna and they see how all this could be destroyed in so short a time ngaba byo nabisobola okuzikirira mukasera akatono nyo then we have the sixth voice e doboze lyo mukaga nalyo tulina which we find from verse 20 to verse 21 sakamnyirwa abiri abiri mulumu it is the voice of celebration now we see the table stand those who mourn are now celebrating and those who celebrate are now mourning Boba chuse katibe bayingi do morning their great loss bakungu bagira byo na ebyo nonese but also morning to the fact that babylon is falling atenga bakungu bagawa the babylonia we good day everything they put their strength to acquire byo na bye bateka ma manyi gabo okufuna everything they put their resources to get together byo na bye bateka mu obugagga bwabo okwe okubisamu has now come to ruin and what a loss the bible tells us bible concerning all the voices of loss eliya maloboze gada agaka agaka abo oroku obyo that they will stand at a distance tibali bilira wala they cannot now touch this tebasta asobola kubikwatako they cannot interact with babylon anymore tebacha asobola kola gana wamu ne babylon they are in shock at what is happening bajudenti so really bibala ba but also they are mourning the personal loss atina bakungu baga olwebi bibalu bibala for all the years spent ebyo nabe batadde mu amanyi gabo that has come to a waste in so short a time ngabyo nabe zikiride mu kasera akatone nnyo the bible symbol Holy Kale calls this time one hour. Bye believe your name eat am chifana nyinti byo navide ba musawe to drive the point home. Okuya mbago otegide that all this that they saw byo navye balaba will come to nothing. Tebijja kutebajja kuganyulwa mu in a very short bijja kuzikirira mu kasera akatone nyo so that is the danger of materialism bwe buzibu bwo bwo sanga mu kwagala nye byo bugagga number 7 echo musamvu we see the voice of silence e doboze lya kasiri kiriro verse 22 to verse 24 ogirwa abiri mu biri paka abiri mu nya the economic system that was so powerful enkole yebye mfune yali yamanyi so vibrant nga ebala so authoritative nga yewambye wonna we now come to an end na yonge etuse ku komerero brethren aboluganda this is how everything wanobuli chimu and i say it again this is how everything yengeri wa yenkola ebintu byonna and everyone na buli muntu yenna without christ a talina kristo yenkomerere mulinze silence kasiri kirido it does not end with a bang tebikomekerezanga oli kuntiko it goes off with a whimper oyita wonga ataba atabiranga na wo that is the tragedy of life 
When we live a life without Christ, however grand our barriers will be, however many people gather for the funeral service, however many announcements collect the people, on the other side of eternity, it is the voice of silence. What is the point I am trying to make? The point is this. The riches that we see the splendor that is around us, the luxury that is all around us, all this is transient. They are all temporary. They will all pass away. They come and they will go. In the end, only one remains glorious. His name is Jesus Christ. He is the only one on whom we can hang our hopes and rest assured that he will not fail us. He is the only one who was, who is, and who is to come. He is the only one who is the same yesterday, today, and forever. The Greek version calls him the Alpha and the Omega. With Alpha being the first letter of the Greek alpha, alphabet. And Omega being the last letter. If we put it in the English, it would be the A and Z or the A and Z. That means everything finds essence in him. He is the one the Bible tells us who has the keys. He says in he opens doors that no man can shut. And he also shuts doors that no man can open. So he alone opens the door to the Father. And he alone is the way to the Father. He opens the door that takes us to the Father's house. And he tells us in that wonderful scripture, let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God and believe in me also. In my Father's house are many if it were not so, I would have told you. But I go to prepare a place for you. Look at this wonderful promise. He is not just the one with the keys. He is the door. He is the way. And he has gone before us to prepare for us. What a wonderful reception we will have. If we put our faith in him on this side of eternity, we cannot place our faith in anything. Babylon wants you to believe that materialism is the better option. But I want you to understand that this is not the end. Everything in God hangs on Christ. Jesus is God's sexual anchor. The glory hangs from him. It hangs upon him. 
It is derived from him. And it depends on him. So the life that you are looking for hangs on Jesus Christ. It can only be derived from Jesus Christ. And it is only upon him that you get to experience life and life more abundant. You see, even the least one of us that belongs to him are welcome to him. He is able to bear everything we have. So no soul can perish. No concern will fall to the ground. However weighty, Everything by faith that hangs in Jesus Christ will be carried. There is room with him to embrace you. If you can only come to him what you are placing your thoughts on, whatever you are placing your faith on, that is not Jesus Christ, is Babylon. And it is falling. It may not appear like it is right now. The fact is, from a spiritual perspective, it is falling. The Bible is calling you to separate yourself, to run away from it, to come out of whatever is holding you to let go of whatever you are holding and lay hold of Christ and be found in him not having your righteousness but the righteousness that comes through faith in his finished work so will you turn to him today Will you come to Jesus? Will you find security in him? Let me take this time to pray for you that has never committed your life to Christ. That has been holding on to materialism. That has been right there in between, not knowing what to do, what to believe. That one that has been swayed by the philosophies of this world. In Jesus Christ, there is hope. In Jesus Christ, there is life. In Jesus Christ, there is everything pertaining to this life and life eternal. Why don't you pray with us? Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, here I am a sinner. I need a savior in my life. Jesus, you died to save us from our sins. I believe that you are the savior of the world. I invite you in my life as my personal Lord and savior. Wash away my sins. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Guide me from this day forward that my life will be centered on you and not centered on the appetites of this world. Lord, I thank you for what you have done in my life. In Jesus' name. Now, for you who has been sleeping left, right, center, you are moving one step forward and two backwards. 
Why don't we pray together? Ask the Spirit of God to anchor you into this truth that a fire will be kindled in your spirit. Father, we thank you. We come before you. Lord, I pray for these people I pray by your Holy Spirit that you will rekindle a fire in them, Lord. Stir us afresh, Lord of glory. Open the eyes of our understanding to that which pertains to life. And her, Lord, by your grace, grant us the ability to let go everything that you have not ordained for our life. That we may pursue Christ. That we may reach forward to the high calling in Christ Jesus. That our lives from this day forward may be lives that are dedicated to you. With the understanding that whatever we see is transient. But in you is everything we can hope for. We give you praise and we thank you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And amen. For you who has committed your life, there is that number on the screen. Please give us a call. Somebody will be there to give you the first instructions in the faith. Now, for you, who God has done something right now, please call as well. Now it could be the same. Let's celebrate what God is doing in your life right now. So till then, that's from Dominion Church. Dominion. We say shalom. God richly bless you. Mukama Amen.